All right, I am back for the daily of space weather. I'm Mr. Green Christmas. I'm Mr. Sun. I'm Mr. Heat Blister. I'm Mr. 101. They call me Heat Miser. Whatever I touch turns to plasma in my clutch. I'm too much. Let's look at the local yellow dwarf here in 304 angstroms. How about a close-up of the south? There are some date stamps for you. No sunspots, no big coronal holes, some magnetic activity. You can see some bright spots there in the 304 angstrom view. We're looking at about nine hours of activity here. Here on December 23rd, I'm wearing my elfin hat. And uh, yeah, there are the filaments in the north, as well as some active regions north of the equator here and one up very far north. Again, no sunspots. Here's the 193 angstroms view. And welcome to winter, folks. Less than two days in, and we're seeing an uptick in solar activity. And for that, we thank you. By the way, patrons, stay tuned for a Christmas present. We're going to have one for the $1 tier and for the $10 tier. So look for that coming today. And we decided to bring up the GOES X-ray Imager. It's been removed from the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard for some reason. And we see a pair of X-ray eyes from just north of the equator looking at us. Check it out. No real x-ray flares, though. A couple active regions here rising in the southeast, so a whole bunch of places to keep an eye out for sunspots. And thanks for tuning in, viewers, on Twitch. If you weren't aware, this thing here is live. And uh, if you're viewing it any place besides Twitch, you're not currently seeing it live. Now, we will have live exclusive content coming to each platform over time. So look for the operation to be changing. By the way, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see some behind-the-scenes stuff that you won't otherwise see, such as yesterday's little view of the sun. Check it out. It looks very hydrogen-y with that pink glow. A fantastic sunrise. And I'm going to let that one play for your viewing pleasure. <clears throat> it stays just ahead of this truck, and then it re-rises. Yes, I muted the sound for this. And there you see the, the mobile sunrise happen. Because when you're driving around, folks, you get to see the sunrise over and over and over again. So sometimes I film it just because I like you. And let's look at Helio Viewer here. Here's the 171 angstroms fade to magnetogram. You see the, sol the full solar disk there. You see some oddly shaped fields, really. Um, this one here has got this round feature. This one here has this straight feature. So here's the fade in 171 angstroms. And you can see the way the fields <clears throat> are associated with the magnetic looping or flux ropes or whatever term you'd like to call them today. And I wonder if I can use a keyboard for that. I don't want to mess with the keyboard. All right, and let me bring up another piece of music here. And let's not let's not crash the browser, shall we? 
How about a little when I? Anyway, there's the Earth scale in relation to those magnetic regions. Just blow that up one spot there. There you see the Earth scale. And those magnetic loops are just about the size of the planet. Let's just say if you were seeing those up close, they would look a little bit, they would look uh, interesting. 10.7 centimeter radial flux is at 71. So just off of the solar minimum conditions, we've seen it as low as 64 during this solar minimum. Kp index is at zero. That's the planetary K index, which is a measurement of the geomagnetic field and its strength. It's taken through an average of the entire global magnetometer population. And we're not going to look at cosmic rays today, but we always leave links to the Network of Cosmic Rays station. If you monitor them yourself and you see anything anomalous in there, drop us a line at smashomash at gmail.com. We'll cover it. And if you want to see the current state of affairs, watch yesterday's video, <clears throat> where we loll and loll about harp and how we're very, very scared of technology that isn't very scary and so on. And we are on a blue screen of death. Come on, computer. Understand the distinction between your you-know-what and a hole in the ground. All right, I'm going to press refresh and hope for the best. I believe we're trying to look at the real-time solar wind here. And we are more bound up than somebody who eats only cheese. There we go. There's a real-time solar wind, I think. Let's try again. <laughs> all right, it loaded. It's all good. I apologize for the delay, but these are the chances you take when you stream live. And we do get these up as quickly as possible onto YouTube, by the way, folks. We start uploading them as soon as we're done live streaming. If you don't watch these on twitch.tv slash smashomash. Phi angle is climbing. It's right around 180 degrees, actually. So, looks like a magnetic connection to a coronal hole. Solar wind density at 6.8 protons per cubic centimeter. And we just saw a small uptick in solar wind speed from around 330 to around 370 kilometers per second. And we do see it reflected in the magnetometer data. We'll show you in a minute on the Magnetosphere movies. There's the data from ACE. And there's the GOES X-ray flux. We see both uh, low energy portions coming up off the floor a little bit. No real, no real X-ray flares happening. Just a little bit of increased X-ray brightness. Electron flux is up a little bit lower than we're forecasted here. I wouldn't be surprised to see this get up to the alert threshold again. I would be surprised if it didn't get to the alert threshold, actually, as I expect there to still be a little bit more electron density out there than we currently see. And relativistic electrons do look like they're leveling out, so... In fact, why don't we look at total electron content? The total electron content forecast on the Space Weather Prediction Center. See if we see any higher levels of errors there or potential errors. And we got a couple little layers of density there. And this is the real-time data, folks. We're looking at 1223. You can see the date stamps below. There's late 1222. So fairly high electron flux over the South Pacific there, Hawaii, where we see the, ano the anomalies in the ionosphere.
speaking of the ionosphere, here it is. Here's uh, six hours of it. And you see sudden charge discharge events going on just south of Hawaii there. Really, the entire South Pacific is just a sea of charge up, charge down anomalies. In other words, there's a high degree of ionospheric flux happening in the South Pacific at the same time that Mauna Loa looks like it may erupt. Let's hope not, as there are some expensive telescopes we don't want to see damage. But we do see some upticks in seismic activity there, and we'll get to it in a moment. First, let's look at the GOES magnetometer, which is in a fairly choppy range here, as we see as we see magnetic association and magnetic dissociation with coronal holes. However, primarily in the South Pole oriented current sheet, so we see a larger range here. And by the way, if you're a new viewer, the N's and M's refer to noon and midnight satellite time. So one of the interesting things is when you see these things cross and diverge, it gives you some indication as to what is going on out there in the around the F2 layer, as these are all around the F2 layer. And you can read all over the internet about the GOES 14 and 16. There are many instruments. Here's the Gong 2 data showing the polarity of the current sheet. And expect to remain in the South Pole oriented portion. Although we do see a little bit of most likely activity south of the equator. So that activity that's rising on the sun, let me explain what I'm talking about. These areas down here increase the probability that the North Pole may shine through, polarity speaking. So it may pull this plasma down and expose the magnetic fields. Because <clears throat> plasma does block magnetic fields, folks, and plasma does prevent us from seeing magnetic fields on the other sides of the ionized plasma. It's just, thou must understand that plasma isn't the fields. Plasma is heated up by the fields. Anyway, this data is one hour and 58 minutes old, and yeah, we do see a little bit of activity associated with those regions in the south. You can see a little bit of green coming through there. As there are a lot of magnetometers used to get the data, 51 on Earth, 1 on stereo B, and 1 on stereo A, which is where my pointer is. Normally we look at the view of the planet soon after this to help people visualize, but as it's taken months and months to figure out what order to do the tabs in. So here's the next slide. It's the GOES magnet, I mean the uh, geospace magnetosphere movies which are based on the space weather modeling framework. <clears throat> and you can see that small increase in the solar wind density happens right there. So there you see the data corroborating between the real-time solar wind and the geospace magnetosphere movies. Right there around 9 o'clock UT, small uptick where you see density in the magnetotail as well as the bow shock region. Multiple Van Allen belts form and double layers. Who knows how many double layers, actually? The double layers probably go out to 50 Earth diameters or something like that. We just don't have enough instruments to measure them all. And let's just move on to the geospace ground magnetic perturbations. Are you having perturbations in your ground? Well, it depends on what part of the planet you're on. Here's the globe view. And we're looking at geospace delta B. That's changes in the Earth's B field, folks. That's the field that goes through the magnet. And we are on a five-second delay here, if you're wondering. It's an intentional five-second delay to increase the frame rate. Anyway, as this plays through a second time here, I would note the 
magnetic pulses coming out of the Pacific Ocean? Or are they going into the Pacific Ocean? Well, the answer is it doesn't matter if they're going out or going in. They are changes in the field. So nobody's saying the field is steady, but these are the changes. As we've got two North Poles, one over Canada, one over Siberia, and a creepy South Pole creeping into the southern Indian Ocean. Here's where the planets are located, and it's very lonely on this side of the solar system right now. What say you, Milky Way Galaxy team? Anyway, there's where things are. There's where they'll be in one week. As the Earth becomes more and more isolated, although Venus and Mercury are going to creep up, and it'll be a it'll be a scenic showdown. Here's where stuff is above my head. I like to know. And we've got what do we have here? We've got Mars and the moon rising right at the same time. So you should have a great crescent moon slash Mars on your eastern horizon. If you've got a clear enough sky to see them. And they're both significantly uh, diffracted from the ecliptic there. It's, it's a nice little scalar on the ecliptic. Then you got Mercury. The Sun, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. It's another celestial pile up, pile up. Turns out my search could not be completed at this time. I don't know why that matters. <clears throat> I don't search for stuff on USGS because it's too messy. It's, it's a messy, messy time doing searches. Anyway, here's the last 24 hours, and we don't see any quakes over a 6 magnitude here. I'm just going to scroll up the list. A deep 4.6 near Kamchatka. I said magmatic activity. Let's see if it's near volcanoes. Most likely it is. Kamchatka. Clear volcanoes right there. And let's get back to the list as we're trying to keep the videos as short as possible. Here's another deep quake in Afghanistan indicating seismic activity there is probably not over. And by the way, that deadly 6 plus magnitude that struck there um, was also at 200 kilometers. So that's not a good sign as the likelihood of another large quake in the Middle East still looms. Just scrolling up the list. Just scrolling. How about a 4.9 at, at the Mariana Islands? That one's at 200 kilometers. Another deep quake out near a volcano in the Aleutians. So it looks like a magmatic up uptick, folks. We see, a <clears throat> we see clearly associated deep quakes and volcanic regions. Here's a deep quake on the west coast of South America. A highly seismically endangered region. Here's a deep quake in Central America at El Salvador. And it looks like the largest of the past 24 hours was this 5.8 in Micronesia. Pager shows green. We're not going to look at it. And the last coming in as we did show prep is a 600 kilometer deep quake at Fiji. Let's look at the map that shows people, that causes people to think, oh, we don't have the, we don't have the shockwave report yet. <clears throat> anyway, there's a location of that deep quake at over 600 kilometers. As this rift zone here in between Fiji and New Zealand, as well as between Tonga, I mean Samoa and New Zealand, is extremely active with very deep earthquakes. One of the more interestingly seismic portions of the planet there. 
By the way, earthquakes freak me out. I've never experienced one, even though I've been in several that were felt, including one in a crowded office where I didn't feel the quake, but I went to the bathroom and saw the toilet water going like this. And I just couldn't believe it. I happened to be walking across a hall, opening large institutional doors, and I completely missed the quake. Everybody in the office was looking around going, what was that? As the ground shook significantly, I think we felt like equivalent to a two plus magnitude quake. It was like a four magnitude quake by Virginia, something like 2011. Don't quote me on it. Something like that, 2011, 2012, sometime around there when I worked at Lehigh Valley Hell Network. <clears throat> yes, Lehigh Valley Hell Network, the largest employer in, I believe, the entire state of Pennsylvania. Here is the pressure map, courtesy windy.com, and let's look at the GFS forecast. I'll just let that play. Hopefully thou losest not frames. And talk us not like Yoda because Star Wars sucks. All right. So we got this low south of Alaska and one hell of a low off of uh, South Carolina. Here's where things will be in about 24 hours, according to the GFS model. A powerful high pressure system centered over eastern Canada. Here are the volcanoes of the past, well, of today, really. It's Christmas Eve Eve. Kluchevskoy is erupting, producing a 20,000-foot ash plume. Please do not attempt to do the Fosbury flop over Kluchevskoy. It could be unhelpful. <clears throat> Flight level... 10,000 over Abiko, Mount Aso, flight level 6,000, Sakurajima exploding, flight level 5,000. It's an aviation minefield, minefield, minefield. Tacono exploding, 7,000 foot plume there, Revenador, flight level 16,000, Sabankaya exploding, flight level 25,000. So all the usual suspects still erupting. And again, happy winter, folks. We're only one day and five hours and 24 minutes in. Do you have tomatoes growing inside? We do. Check out the forecast on Tropical Tidbits for temperature anomaly. It's going to be some warm days <clears throat> in the U.S. So get your outdoor activities done. Go on a bike ride. Do things like that. And speaking of bike rides, shout out to Terry, Terrence Leonard. Do they call you Terry? I don't know. Terrence Leonard. Holla. We got the coffee. It smells freaking fantastic. And let us give some words of wisdom to our viewers from your card. Again, thanks very much. We gave half of the Indonesian blend to Becky. So we'll see what she thinks of that. And I'll be buying a coffee grinder. Possibly today. I'll let you know. Anyway... The gold standard, the, the wisdom from Terry is the gold standard is 16 parts water to one part organic coffee. 16 parts water, one part coffee. Now, I haven't actually measured mine, but i got to try this now. As he's, as a cyclist, we know he's a proper science nerd because like gamers... Cyclists don't do stuff that doesn't work. Shout out to all cyclists. Anyway, there's a temperature anomaly. Let's show the forecast through New Year. You're going to see hot temperatures all around the central U.S. Up to 16 degrees above normal, it looks like. And that's degrees Celsius. And there's what will be going on in the final minutes, according to the GFS model, of the decade. The decade is over, folks. I guess we have to do the 
we have to do some of the best of the year, best of the decade, best of the history of mankind type episode. What do you say? <clears throat> and we are having technical difficulties. Oh my gosh, the whole system is falling apart, folks. Let's talk about the ultimate blacksmith. It's the local yellow dwarf, otherwise known as the sun. Were you aware that all your weather comes from space? Anyway, we got a massive system here about to strike, currently actually striking South Carolina, as it is getting inundated down there. And all signs point to it getting only worse. There's already lightning hitting. I think. Maybe not. No lightning yet, but it's going to worsen. And here's what's going on in the water vapor map. And uh, it's not really an atmospheric river. It's more like an atmospheric lake. And when the pressure conditions change, that atmospheric lake is going to come crashing down on the south Carolina, which it's already doing, by the way. The entire state is inundated. And we have this weird dry air, low temperature inversion kind of a situation going on here where we got a bunch of dry air rotating, uh, rotating counterclockwise when usually dry air systems rotate clockwise. So we've got this massive pressure gradient right here. And uh, let's zoom in on that as that is the... That's the flavor of the day when it comes to your weather pornography section. Have you, have you tried out the Pornhub VPN? The Pornhub VPN. Yes, there's a free VPN on Pornhub and another one on Mozilla. If you've tried out any of them, why don't you leave us a comment? Please stand by. For more special messages. And I apologize for my absence. Tales of my demise are nothing more than lies and Tales of Despise during Tales from the Smash Side. Please leave a comment if you've seen the Tales from the Smash Side intro. Anyway, let's move on to look at more stuff as there's lots more stuff to cover. We don't want the video to be too long. Shout out to Becky. Let us know what you think of the Indonesian coffee. Oh yeah. We'll be grinding up some of that. Reusing the bags, by the way. If you get these bags with the one-way valves, folks, reuse them to store your high-end blends that you grind yourself if you're getting crazy like that. We also hooked Becky up with some of the Cronenberg 1664. I didn't wrap it. I just handed her a four-pack. And I'd show you some Cronenberg 1664, but it's not necessary. We did a review of it. Watch our old videos. By the way, thanks, patrons, for being associate producers of the show. People such as Terrence, especially. Jeez. Thanks again for the for the organic coffee, man. Let me read the label on this one. A very clean, jazzy Peru offering. The cup has awesome depth of flavor and is solid medium to dark roast coffee. Lighter roasts have some stronger... Lemony acidity, a bit of soft fruit, some herbal, and a bit of nutty caramel with some lingering hints of a chocolatey undertone. Oh, medium roast develop more of a chocolatey sweet tone with, with reduced acidity. Hint of the nutty caramel soft fruit can still be found. Darker roast turn strong and edgy, but retain good sweetness, mostly chocolatey with some smoke and toasty tone. I'm all about it. It's going to be fantastic. 
So thanks again, patrons, and uh, please consider becoming a patron. And if you do it, if you do it by New Year, you'll get the whatever level patron gift. And thanks, Smash Team. Stay tuned for the that is an ass, and that is a hole in the ground where we talk about basically anything. First, let's talk about comedy, as it's a funny, funny day at Facebook. Now, there's a lot of junkware on the internet, and Facebook already writes some of the worst junkware that you could pop. Mark, get back on the screen, Mark. Now, this is this is Mark Zuckerberg, the gentleman, CEO of Facebook, the guy that, um, remember the guy that learned how to drink water in front of Congress? Remember that guy? Mark Zuckerberg, he's the CEO of Facebook. He created some software to facilitate people going to concerts together, and it turned into Facebook. And then they bought out a bunch of competition and ruined things like MySpace. Remember that? Anyway, Facebook is considering creating... Wait for it. Wait for it. An operating system to replace Android. <laughs> Uh, you always need a good laugh in the morning, so it's it's always nice to to read start the morning with extreme tech. Oh my gosh, this is one of the best publications. This is like, <laughs> <clears throat> and listen, I don't have to really go into it. Let me just say this: I've always been a huge critic of a company called Microsoft. I coined the term micro sloth. Because, well, let's let's just say Microsoft Windows has been kind of a joke in the programming community since its existence. Now, when companies like Facebook create software that's nothing more than spyware, and they install it on phones to the point where it doesn't uninstall unless you root your device, taking the chance of bricking it, it is so not worth by the way, Facebook spies on you via your phone, even if you don't have an account. And since the app can't be uninstalled without rooting your device, Facebook spies on you no matter what you do, unless you root your device. Are you ready to switch to Linux? Let me just show you something real quick. Here's another bonus feature. It's Ubuntu.com where you can download software to resurrect your oldest computer. Make yourself a boot disk. Try running the entire operating system just from a CD-ROM. It'll run just fine. It'll probably run better than your Windows system currently does, no matter what version of Windows you're running, whether it's old or new. Are you aware of the planned obsolescence of Windows 7? Security updates will stop. Ubuntu's free and open source. So resurrect your old computer over the Christmas holiday and let us know what your results are. And and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Now, last year, Facebook was censoring us, which is why we barely use it anymore. We even created a 12 Days of Christmas song regarding Facebook's censorship maneuvers. So I don't know. Check out the videos around Christmas last year as we actually got the ball verses written. Let's talk about more comedy. The Big Bang. Have you ever heard of that? Well, it's funny because it's not science. It's not measurable. We'll never be able to measure the age of the universe, no matter how many cosmic microwave backgrounds we have. <laughs> and by the way, that's not a thing. Also, LIGO. I've got issues with LIGO since it's not measuring gravitational waves. Another silly, silly idea. Um, but anyway, the new article here, and we're on Universe Today, is about how there are black holes that are somewhere on the, in the realm of 12 billion years of age, according to the standard model of astronomy. So, so um, let me see if there's a video clip I can play for you here. 
I can't remember if there is or not, as there are a lot of articles to cover here. As when we look at objects that are very far away uh, and don't understand at all their nature, since we don't understand the nature of the sun in, in terms of classical astronomy, cosmology, keep in mind, folks, when we look at a star in a distant galaxy, we're using our standard astronomical model of the sun uh, to do things like calculate its age, mass, and all that sort of stuff. And let me just, I think there's a good clip in here. As this is going to be talking about how it defies, it defies standard cosmology to have a 12.5 billion year super, 12.5 billion year old supermassive black hole, which those of us in the realm of reality refer to these as supermassive radio sources because it would have to be super massive to be such a stable radio source. <laughs> you know, like a super massive chunk of condensed matter. Anyway, check out the article. We've, we've put it in here, and we've got to stop talking about astronomy now because the harp bases have turned on, and it's, they're frying our brain. It's, oh, we've been harped. Oh, 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 oh the wattage. Oh, the wattage. Somebody help me and say, oh, it's pulling me into the ground. The harp, it's all because of harp. Oh. 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 All right, I think they've turned off the harp. Thank goodness. Neil Thompson, please leave a comment if you know how much wattage it would take for harp to knock me on the ground. Fortunately, we have shrubs outside, so we don't have to worry about 5G. <laughs> By the way, press like and subscribe on YouTube if you enjoy the content. And keep in mind that we're not paid for it. We're paid exactly zero dollars, and, and uh, to Google it makes 100% sense to pay us zero dollars. We're also on Facebook if you want to weed through... Uh, capital ship level quagmires of nonsense and ridiculous software probably like the proposed operating system that Facebook <laughs> wants to replace other spyware with so Facebook wants to replace other spyware known as Android with Facebook's own spyware it's gonna be war of the spyware and everybody's gonna run Linux and tell certain companies to stick it in their <clears throat> stick it in their microsloth. So please check out alternative social media such as BitChute. Right? We put our videos up there because this YouTube channel could be deleted at any time. As we're very critical of whoever we feel like being critical of, since I live in this place called the US, which means I can say whatever I like. And <clears throat> for those of you who'd like to censor me, please leave a comment. We'll tell you all about censorship. Check us out on Minds.com, by the way. We're up to 521,000 views, but only 702 subscribers. So why, why aren't people subscribed at Minds? I don't understand it. If you don't have an account there, well, what the hell? Make an account already. Jeez. Make an account, people, or Pepple. Make an account, Pepple. Here, let me put up an image. Minds.com. It's just like Facebook, except, except you don't get censored. You can have whatever you want on your channel. What can I put up? How about an image? How about a star plate? I don't even know what it is. Anyway, it's up now. It's, it's the Grim Reaper galaxy or something. Minds.com slash Mashamash. And hey, thanks again for tuning in on Twitch, all of you who are there and leaving comments. We greatly appreciate it. It's a shame we don't have a pop-up chat on this, as if we had a pop-up chat, I'd be able to come in at any time. Uh, 
Uh, I'm not there. Don't use the word quantum. That's all I have to say. Don't try to explain things you don't understand by saying quantum. This is what this is what happens in Star Trek TNG when they say subspace. We sent a subspace signal that does things that aren't a thing. It's a subspace signal. Don't, seriously, don't just say quantum. Anyway, welcome viewers on Twitch. Again, check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash mashamash if you're not already there. As we put up exclusive content all the time. Here's yesterday's sunrise. And I don't know what is up with this interface, but you should see a pretty good sunrise. You got these nice stria in the clouds, and then you got some solar spectra there at Instagram.com slash smashomash. It looks like a big hydrogen thing. It looks like there's a lot of hydrogen involved. By the way, we do cover economic factors also. Watch yesterday's video to hear all about things like cryptocurrency and gold and silver. As for making the videos less time sensitive, were you aware that there are $1.5 trillion in missing $100 bills? Now, we don't mean the government misplaced this money now. We mean there's a bunch of cash around and we don't know where the heck it is. Did you know that there are more $100 bills now in circulation than any other kind of bills? What the hell? Why are there so many Benjamins out there? Anyway, there's a video here about uh, all about it featuring Lou Dobbs and Steve Mnuchin. Check it out. There's the graph. Somewhere around 2017, 2016. Somewhere around 2016. $100 bills exceeded $1 bills in circulation, and that is what you call inflation. Anyway, here's the here's Steve Mnuchin and Lou Dobbs talking about it on Twitter. This was on Fox guest. on now Fox Business. A here's a teaser team. clip. We'll put links to the article. We're going to have balanced trade. We're going to have reciprocal trade. And he has begun now to balance international trading relationships with China, USMCA. I think they might be paying lip service to Trump's tariffs. Now, the government should not be involved in interfering with economic trade. However, it is done in other countries. So there is a legitimate argument to be placed when dealing with especially places like China. One not placed by me because two wrongs don't Let's make a not right. forget uh, the agreement, the trading agreement, uh, with Japan and South Korea. I mean, this has been a spectacular demonstration. It's a demonstration of crushing the Chinese economy unnecessarily. Anyway, there's a pork shortage all around the world and there are all kinds of issues. Are you ready for your food prices to rise? Have you invested in silver yet? Yada, yada, yada. Let's talk about ISIS. <laughs> <clears throat> The ESIS is part of the Parker Solar Probe. And let me just play a clip about the ESIS instrument. As we talk about space weather daily, and we don't expect to get banned by playing a small portion of a NASA video. ESIS, the Integrated Science Investigation of the Sun, is an experiment which looks at energetic particles over a broad range of energies. So this thing has been picking up some interesting ranges of energies, let's say, to say the least. And here's an article about it on, this one's on phys.org. It'll be all over the science wire. And we see large energy disparities here in, I guess you would say, unexpected spots. So here's, here's what the image looks like. Let me get rid of this drawer. That drawer doesn't go away. All right, so there's that image. And you can see sudden massive upticks here in the energy levels. So it's as if there are giant waves out here, uh, swirling waves that aren't super evident as the probe goes through these areas. Keep in mind, it's moving at incredibly fast speeds. So in order to see this much, this has to be very, very dense, a very dense region of very high energy particles 
just in that small region, but then just right by it, uh, you know, about two days apart there, huge disparities in areas that are very close to the sun, including at the perihelion of its orbit. So it's fairly interesting there, I would say. And, you know, we're talking about particles here that are in the... One of the sensors checks up, I, I believe senses up to the tens to hundreds of millions of volts, mega electron volts. So it's... Uh, an interesting instrument, to say the least, the ESIS. Here's another illustration of what's going on, uh, where there are these areas where the particles seem to clump up, massively clump up. And uh, as, it, it, as now we see polarization as a tool in the cosmic toolbox, we see glass beads not forming together because of gravity, but because of polarization which is probably the explanation for why this is happening. Please leave a comment if you have a theory. And we really need to start clipping these videos into separate clips. Let's talk about gamma. You know, gamma, the radioactive turtle that flies at Mach 3. Gamma first appeared in the 1965 film Gamma. It's one of Godzilla's enemies. Well, there's a there's an instrument up there with some code in it called Gamera. And uh, seeing some interesting stuff about the plasmosphere here. Going on with this. Let's, I'll let this play. I don't think I'll get banned for that at all. And this has to do with the way the magnetotail happens and the way the, the way the velocity interacts with the solar wind outside of the magnetosphere and all that kind of stuff. Here's another. This is a great demonstration here. And you see what you see is you see constant magnetic disconnection and reconnection with the magnetotail, which is really no surprise as there are strings of plasma that are going to just naturally form on those magnetic field force lines. So this one, this is actually, I believe this is just a model so this is, this is a model that's actually based on data here, I think. And you can see the difference between where the magnetic field force lines are at daytime versus at nighttime. And I just hope we're getting a good frame rate for this because this is uh, super interesting. If you're not able to see a good frame rate here, don't worry, we'll leave links to this also. If you're viewing it on the live stream, you're screwed. Just go to phys.org, Nightside Barrier. Uh, it's in the Astronomy and Space section. Nightside Barrier gently breaks bursty plasma bubbles. So and then you can see the way the field force lines, they'll draw the plasma in and repel the plasma out depending on their proximity to certain orientations and combinations of magnetic field force lines as these things are reacting kind of the same way the same way air or other fluid would react to wind, except in response to magnetic fields, which is very kind of strange and counterintuitive for most people to get their heads around when it comes to standard astrophysics, as people have been taught for decades that space is empty and there's nothing going on out there and there's just uh, it's just a total vacuum and uh, the only forces at play are gravity and Collisions are the only cosmic tool in the toolbox, and gravity is the only tool in the creation of things like stars and all this sort of stuff. So check out that article as it is some interesting science. And we've also left links to the to the Gamera page, the real Gamera, you know, the uh, the Jap uh, the Japan, what is it, Civil Space Service, the grid agnostic. Magneto hydrodynamic for extended research applications. So this is this is another good project. They are associated with Johns Hopkins. By the way, if you're not familiar with our mission, and thanks to our new viewers, subscribers, patrons, etc., the mission is to assist, study, and report on the ongoing formation of a unified theory of physics. Also to raise the awareness 
of the humans, of the relationship between space weather and Earth effects, as all your weather comes from space. Your climate comes from space, too, if you weren't aware. To connect and consult with media organizations to multiply our reach, hence this video, to demonstrate cutting-edge proof-of-concept solutions to problems, such as <laughs> too many deer outside would murder our tomatoes, and so they're inside instead, to publish scientific papers in a multidisciplinary manner, including, but not limited to, things like spectroscopy, chemistry, and so on. Also to assist the humans, the humans, assist the humans by advancing the study of predictive phenomenon in order to optimize the value of their gold-pressed latinum to reduce risk and liability, save lives and resources, and adapt no matter what the adversity is. And to not be ossified in our beliefs as that's not science and to treat those who are with love, respect, and inclusion to the scientific discussion. Remember, folks, ignorance is the root of all knowledge. You can't possibly know something before you don't know it. So check out smashamash.com slash forum slash mission and look for the live forum to come soon where we can discuss literally anything on our own servers. So consider becoming a patron to help to support and advance these directives. And thanks again, Smash Team. We've got a couple of bonus features here. So stay tuned for that. It's the close-up of the visible. Now we, we always download a high-res image of this to show you that there are zero sunspots at the current juncture. And you can see a blank, blank solar disk. A, a bunch of magnetic plages around, so there are some areas to keep an eye on. And when I say eye on, the pun's intentional. Also, here's the colorized magnetogram. And there are those areas and to look for the magnetic activity. And we again, we see some interesting little formations here, some straight lines, some crescents. Here's like a, it looks like a low pressure next to a high pressure almost, right? Some more plages forming down here. I think these might be the most significant as these seem to be affecting the magnetohydrodynamics the most. Here's the last 48 hours in 94 angstrom. Now, one of the reasons we use a 94 angstrom's scope on the SDO is because it, get off of my screen, because it, ref, it returns more images. This one takes 10 images per minute instead of, what is up with that, folks? This one returns 10 images per minute instead of only six images per minute. Or, wait a minute, is it six images instead of two minutes? I don't know, read all about it. Look up the SDO, you got, there's information on the page. In fact, I'll show you where it is. Just head to the SDO page the sun now, right? If you want to know about what each scope is, just click on the I button next to that scope. It takes images every two seconds instead of every 10 seconds. So five times as many images come out of the 94, as well as I think the 131 angstroms view also. That's part of the reason why we watch that because we get a little bit more detail on solar flare activity and the looping. And we also see these plasma sprites, as you see up here in the, in the, in the northeast. There's one going right over the center of the disk, actually, in this view. And it's part of the reason why we often use that for thumbnails. So thanks again for tuning in, everybody. We are out. Possibly more content coming this afternoon. And look for a lot more content coming over the holidays. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to stare at the sun. And since it'll never be now again, may that solar wind be at your back and that atherosclerosis absent from your veins.